Hi, hello everyone. Welcome back to NPTEL MOOCs course on developing soft skills and personality. Uh, we are on the third week and then we are on the last two lectures of uh, this week's modules and this week particularly I have been focusing on habits and in the last lecture I introduced a new term and then we will continue with this, this zigarnik effect. But then let us try to look at this effect and see how we can use this for productivity and personal growth. This is module 5 and uh, totally this is going to be the 17th lecture you have been watching. I hope you are uh, enjoying watching these lectures and uh, as usual I would like to begin with a quick highlight of what I did in the last lecture. In case you have forgotten, you can just take a quick recapture of what we did in the previous one. Uh, the most important question that I asked in the last lecture is, why is that some are able to change their habits in a lightning second and others are not able to do in ages? Why even if you want to take lot of efforts, you are not able to change some of the habits and then somebody else is changing it so quickly? And I said that the answer lies actually in the way dopamine is functioning and the way we are utilizing it to make or more ourselves using good or bad habits. Now, apart from that, some people are able to change quickly. It is because that they have increased their level of self-awareness. We started the uh, introductory lecture with aspects of self-awareness and then if you have gone through that, you are already on the way of heightening your self-awareness. Then we also talked about perceptions. So, about correct perceptions, perceptions of reality also makes you assess what is a good habit and what is a bad habit. And last but not the least, you should be able to use dopamine in a very constructive manner because dopamine plays a very crucial role in forming addictive habits. Now, bad habits are usually formed in those circumstances where it is easy to seek pleasure by which you are also able to avoid painful or disagreeable experiences, at least for the time being. This means on the one hand, you are able to seek very nice activities that gives you instantaneous pleasure and at the same time you are able to avoid something you think is disagreeable. Take for example, just uh, not seeing somebody or not trying to do an activity. The other thing you do, okay, you just go and then join a party, enjoy the party for some time. It is a birthday party and then you just freak out and your mind is completely out of the tension that is involved in completing that disagreeable activity which you do not want to do at that time. And then I talked about this uh, zigarnik effect which actually highlights a compulsive need to complete. It is in fact is called as uh, the uh, motivation molecule that is responsible for uh, our uh, brain to actually secrete this which is responsible for giving a, us this pleasure either in terms of rewarding or not giving us in terms of punishing us. Okay. Now, the thing about this dopamine is it actually does not know whether you are using a good habit or a bad habit to induce it. Now, I then said that we can use this psychological understanding to look at why we are not able to come out of emotional breakups because any emotional relationship that you are involved in, it actually associates you with lot of activities which are planned and lot of activities which have started. But when there is a breakup suddenly, so it leaves one with lot of incomplete tasks, hence the disharmony or the dissonance the person feels. Now, how you can counter it? Again, going by the dopamine way, I suggested that you form new goals, particularly like uh, if you developed obesity during the time, try to keep fit or try something else completely like creative writing. This will release a new set of dopamine every time a goal is achieved and then you will feel 
uh, that you are gaining more and more pleasure and slowly you will come out of uh, the negative thinking that you associated with emotional breakups and thanks to this uh, zigarnik effect thoughts were coming and intruding in your brain even if you wanted to focus on other things because you left it incomplete now the other thing i said is any remnants i said that you just completely burn it or bury it or you keep away from that places that you hanged out together you just don't go to the place completely come out of it immerse yourself in new activities get new dopamine benefits and then after time you will realize that you have actually come through the other interesting thing that i uh, said just as a passing but i didn't spend more time in the previous lecture is that reminding of the bad things the other person did for you okay now usually when a emotional breakup has happened initially there is some kind of bitterness some kind of grief but after some time what happens the brain will always go back and remember the most pleasurable activities that happened during that time it always wants to go back to that idyllic or euphoric moments the very glorious past in which both of you were involved but the other thing that it does is it goes there and then leaves you with a sense of incompleteness and gives you withdrawal symptoms makes you alienate from the immediately surrounding society and gives you lot of other traumatic feelings like depression and even it can uh, take you to suicidal tendencies to counter it it is suggested that don't only focus only on the good things the other person did because dopamine is again and again making your brain to seek uh, that kind of pleasure and then you will you have associated that pleasure only with that particular person so you get it only when you are able to link with the other person and the person is no more or the person is not there uh, in your vicinity or you cannot contact the person again for obvious reasons so that is again going to give you negative thinking and develop bad habits now to counter it it is suggested that think of the bad things okay sometimes the person acted very cranky jerky got into your nerves you even when the relationship was going on you wondered whether you should hang out this person forever there were so many breaking points so many times you thought that rather you have made a wrong decision okay and then the other person literally got into your nerves now think of those times the times when you thought that maybe this is not the right person now that is going to help you to minimize the dopamine craving that goes and then seeks that idyllic moment the euphoric moment so this thinking of the bad things that happened which generally memory tries to avoid again because of the dopamine factor but then if you can think of that that will also help you to use dopamine but in a different manner and then it will make you strengthen yourself and it will make you come out of it gradually and in sooner or later completely and then start a fresh chapter in your life now let's look at the same zigarnik effect that i talk to you that intrudes your thoughts whenever you come to think of some activity that you left incomplete now how we can use that effect for productivity and personal growth now since unfinished activity gives anxiety according to the effect it is important to focus on an activity and stick to it till it is completed think about this again if you leave something unfinished so that time it looks like okay uh, that's fine it can be completed later and then you go and start something else but then your mind is already heavy with that task that is not at completed and then it's not letting you focus on another activity and your mind goes back and reminds you oh what about that you left that incomplete and then you are spending most of your time on this i will not let you focus on this until you go back and complete that so how you can 
make yourself a very highly productive person and use this effect for personal growth. So, one guiding principle that you can have in terms of that is think that if you start a work, finish it. So, if you start it, finish it. Any small thing, reading a book, even it can be uh, let us say uh, you wanted to listen to your song for 10 minutes, do not leave it incomplete, finish it. Particularly with regard to any kind of job that is assigned to you at a personal level, professional level, do not leave it in between. If you start it, finish it. This is an important growth habit you need to inculcate in your personality. Keep telling you again and again, if I start it, I will finish it. Come what may, whatever obstacles, whatever will come and stand in between, I will surmount all the difficulties, but I will finish it. I will persevere, I will be there till the end, I will seek to it that it is completed. Because finishing it gives you a sense of completion and that sense of completion gives you utmost satisfaction and blissfulness and peace of mind. One thing that I try to impinge on your mind throughout this course is that it is utmost important that you have your peace of mind, which is much more important than any kind of pleasure seeking, any kind of uh, happiness, but that you will get when you try to have self actualization, that you will get when you are able to cater to your need achievement when you operate at a high level of self-awareness, but that will also get when you are able to complete a task and that will give you that blissful peace of mind, which is very much needed. Live a life without regret, but live also a life that gives you complete peace. Now, when you move from one finished task to another, your confidence level will increase and you will be devoid of any anxiety. Initially, if you leave something unfinished, incomplete, so the thoughts will keep haunting you and then it will not let you develop your confidence and it will keep on enhancing your low self-esteem, it will undermine you and it is only uh, keep you more and more at anxious state. But then understanding this part that when you leave from one finished task to another. So, that is going to build up your personality, that is going to make you feel that I start something, I will finish it, you will exude lot of confidence and people will run after you because they think that oh, this is the person whom I should approach because if I give this task, it will be completed. Now, this knowledge in you also helps in beating procrastination. Procrastination is one of the worst bad habits one can develop and this thinking alone and this realization and internalization can help you in beating procrastination. How? You realize that it is just the starting trouble. Okay. Any work that you keep postponing, that you keep avoiding doing it, understand it is just the starting trouble you just start it somehow or other and then because you want the euphoric thing that dopamine will give you once you complete it and because you know that this zigarnik effect is not going to let you free unless you complete it, you will finish it anyhow. So, you start it somehow and then you will finish it anyhow and that thinking that it is all it needs to beat procrastination is starting it somehow. You do not want to go for uh, walking, it is just getting up your bed and taking the first step, so the rest will happen. You do not like to start writing the assignment, you do not want to submit it, it is just writing the first few lines. In fact, even you can say, I will just work only for 10 minutes. You set your alarm and then just work only for 10 minutes on that activity and then after 10 minutes you will feel that you are already charged, already warmed up. 
because now the uh, zigarnik effect is going to be active and then with the combination with dopamine you know that now you cannot leave it uh, incomplete you need to continue with that so start and then you finish it and keep that as a kind of golden key line just to remember in terms of developing a good habit especially if you want to develop your productivity and personal growth now there are certain other aspects which you need to keep in your mind with regard to brain and that will also help you to increase your level of productivity now brain needs to complete the cycle of an activity that we have started so if you want to free the brain from addictive habits you need not pattern any uncompleted or incomplete task in it what does it mean now brain has to get a feeling that one activity cycle the loop is completed or fulfilled once we start it so if you want to actually free the brain from addictive habits so you should not pattern that with any activities that remain incomplete this again means unfinished tasks huge large amount of mental resources by occupying and blocking the premium space but refusing to go away until you finish it so the the unfinished activities so they are just like cancer spreading and occupying the premium space in your brain and then unless you just try to shed them out okay unless you try to remove them from your mind so they are not going to let you occupy that important space for using other creative and interesting and challenging activities for this reason alone you should stop watching any tele serials if you want to free your mind from a chain of incomplete activities why why should not you watch tele serials because the brain forms addictive behavior such as compulsive tv serial watching till it receives the information that the who done it what's happening next okay who is the murderer why did it happen will the person get back the memory or not is the person going to die or not now all these things so will be shown in the next day next week so the brain needs to receive the information that it is known it is complete that the serial will not be continued any more in the next week or the week after till it needs to know that it will keep on watching it even if it is shown for years ages until it wants to know that it is completed the brain is getting addictive to watching it so if you want to free a lot of space in your brain for more activities that will help you to develop high level of productivity and personal growth stop watching any serials the same thing happens while playing video games now the video games take you to a near level of closure it you get a feeling that you reach the level and you are going to complete it but they will never let you reach the final level then they will never let you to open the last gate and then go and get the treasure so it's always just nearing but not complete enough now that is the way the games will ensure it will make sure that you stick to it and get addicted to it perennially a permanent addiction permanent enslaving is caused because of this zigarnik effect that can be uh, used positively or negatively and in video games it is used to make you glue to the games so that the mind always seeks that i need to complete i need to complete and then it will never let you complete and then can we use zigarnik effect in a very constructive positive manner yes now if you can use it constructively the zigarnik effect can give you the motivation to make you leave from sick bed and complete the task at hand so even uh, great artists have always done 
So, when, when a product remains unfinished, incompleted, so it is this thinking in the mind that even if I am sick, I have to complete it, I have to finish it. Okay. So, that pushes them, so makes them even overcome any kind of physical pain and then act and then perform, experience the peak performances just because of this activity that is wired into the brain that unless you complete it, you are not going to get your peace of mind. You will not get that creative assonance, it will be only dissonance. Now, the simple example is earworms. So, earworms are uh, like uh, figuratively referred to songs. So, you might have experienced like suddenly when I get, when you get up and then one song keeps uh, coming in your mind. You do not know how it came, maybe you just saw somewhere or heard somewhere on radio or somebody mentioned a word of that song and then it triggered in your mind and then it keeps triggering your mind the entire day okay. and then it is like you keep hearing. So, that is why it is like ear warm, it is just inside your uh, ear and then you are not able to do anything out of it unless you give complete time, you listen to it fully and then you just attend to your mind patiently that okay, I am listening, I am completing it fully, just go away, it is not going to leave you. So, sometimes the entire day it keeps playing in your ear again and again, somebody started it, somebody whistled it on the way, but you got it in your ear. Now, this is again a simple example of this Zigarnik effect, where incomplete things will continue to haunt you. The brain is also immersed in something that does not let you focus on any task at hand because of this effect. But then internalization of the Zigarnik effect can give you the much needed intrinsic motivation to achieve or excel in any activity. What do I mean by this? If you can internalize, okay, think deep and then identify and understand that if only I will start an activity and if I finish it, I will not let this Zigarnik effect act on me. It will not keep on making me go back to tasks which I did not complete it before. So, I will always have time to do new activities and spend more time on creative tasks than to get bogged down in something which I did not want to do. So, whether you like it or not, first you finish it and then come out of it, you escape. Now, that is the way I want you to internalize that I start it, I will finish it, I will not leave anything incomplete, otherwise this Zigarnik effect. So, it is going to let my memory go back and then it is going to intrude in the most uh, unpleasant time okay, and or the significant time that I have been giving to a new activity, it comes and haunts me. What you should do? You can rewire your brain to seek completions as it takes you to resolution of tension and adds to the feel good factor. So, you just completely try to make your brain understand that if I finish it, I will be able to resolve any tension and it also gives you this feel good factor. Okay, I completed, I feel good about myself and this is what I want. Not completing, so it is going to haunt me again and it is not going to allow me to do another task in a better manner. So, let me finish it. So, keep this in mind and this one single quality that since this Zigarnik effect is there, I just want to avoid letting that happen in my mind. So, in order to counter, I will always start a task and finish it, I will never leave anything incomplete. Now, even one small thing that I tell you, okay, the email inbox, let us say that has around 5000 mails in your inbox. If you can delete all uh, mails which are not needed and create folders and put which you need it later and create 0 in your inbox and if you can see that. So, it is actually making you uh, become more productive 
and you realize that you are able to check this zigornik effect. Otherwise, every time you go to email, it is also causing you lot of heaviness. It always leaves you a uh, feeling that there is something that you left, something may be important is there buried and you forgot to look at it, but there is no time to check that. But then if you can do this, mind is completely free and then brain can focus on a new task completely with full vigor. Now, I just want to conclude this lecture with one interesting thought from William Shakespeare that comes in his uh, most famous play Hamlet. And this is actually a, an advice given by a father to a son, Polonius to his son Laertes. But why I am using this for the conclusion? In the past two lectures at least, I am trying to tell you avoid bad habits, form good habits. Now, you may ask me what are those good habits, what are those bad habits? And I have listed some, I have said that these are good habits, these are bad habits. Now, I or anybody else is not going to oversee you, whether you are going to form them, whether you are going to use them in your daily life, whether you are going to really uh, change from the above average to excellence using this. Because you should not think that, oh, somebody is there, then I will try to form a good habit. But somebody is not there, nobody is watching, I will try to do something wrong and then inculcate a bad habit. So, this is what Shakespeare says, he says, this above all to thine own self be true. So many suggestions have been given, lots of pieces of advice have been given, but above all whatever has been said to you, to thine own self be true, be true to yourself. You do not have to true to somebody else, you do not have to be true to your father, you do not have to be true to your parents, you do not have to be true to your boss, you do not have to be true to your spouses, you do not have to be true to your children, you do not have to be true to your neighbor, but just be true to yourself. And it must follow as the night the day, thou canst not then be false to any man. If you follow it up each day, every day regularly that you insist, promise to yourself that you will be true to yourself, he says that then you will never be false to any man, which implies that you will never form any bad habits if you are true to yourself. Keep this thought in mind at this point of concluding this lecture. There is just one more lecture to complete this week and uh, thank you for watching this video and I wish you that you have a very good day.